Welcome to the Frugalpreneur Podcast. I am your host, Sarah St. John. This episode is what I refer to as a showcase episode where I feature a bootstrapped entrepreneur and they briefly share their tips, tricks, tactics, techniques, and tools that help them bootstrap their business and the successes and failures along the way. My hope is that each of these showcase episodes will provide at least one valuable takeaway that you can implement right away in your own bootstrap business journey. Now on to the episode. I never started out with the idea of becoming an entrepreneur. In fact, it was so far from my realm of even something that you could do. I just was always kind of taught you follow this traditional path of you graduate, you go to college, you get a a steady job. And that's exactly what I did. I went to college. I got my undergrad degree in education and I got a job teaching. And I loved teaching. It's something that I've always wanted to do as a kid. I wanted to be a teacher. I would play school with my stuffed animals and I loved learning and I loved helping other people have those moments. And so teaching was a natural fit for me. But about five or six years in, I started feeling kind of burned out and restless. And at that time, I was engaged, getting ready to plan a wedding and get married. And my fiance had all these hobbies that he liked to do in his spare time. And I didn't have a hobby. And so I started looking for something that brought me joy outside of my day-to-day work, and that was photography. And I started really going headfirst into taking photos and learning about digital photography and taking in all the information that I could. And it turned into this the side business. And that then developed into this full-fledged business that I fell in love with. And I fell in love with the business of building a business, the marketing, and kind of the way the puzzle pieces all fell into place. So when I left my teaching career, In 2017, I started getting a flood of people asking me that I knew and other photographers, other business owners asking me, how did you do this? Teach me your ways. And I was like, oh, this is the perfect blend of what I love about building a business. And my natural gift and love of teaching is that I can now teach others how to grow their business so that they can live out this dream that they have of having time freedom and financial freedom. And so That's what led me to where I am today, where I do get to mesh those two things perfectly to help others find that for themselves. It's always interesting to me when I hear people use the phrase like bootstrap. And because in my mind, it was never an option to have money coming in at the beginning of my business. It And and it's a mindset thing, or maybe it was just the way that I fell into this idea of building a business. But everything was a grind for me. It was If I make money, it goes right back into my business. And I was fortunate enough that I was building my business alongside a nine to five job. And so I wasn't necessarily looking for income right away. I mean, it was it was nice when it came in, but I was able to put what I was making back into my business. I also was really good at finding ways to make things work without the first thought being, how can I throw money at this? And so I would look at how can I build connections that can result in helping me in some way. So for example, I became really good friends with a videographer. And so they, we would shoot weddings together or we would go to different events together. And then ultimately I could say like, hey, I would love to get some headshots for you or some behind the scenes photos for you to use in your, your marketing in exchange, would you be willing to maybe do like a quick little 30 second video trailer that I can use to advertise my business? So I built a lot of connections in various industries and we just helped each other out. And even if it was maybe not an exchange or it was they offered a discount because we were friends working with other like local businesses, you just find ways to make it happen. I always think of that saying of, If you really want it, you find a way. If you don't, you find an excuse. And in my mind, there was no excuse that was going to happen. It was just going to be, I'm going to find a way. And I did. For me in business or life, I always try to frame things as there's no failures necessarily. There are just learning opportunities. And so this is true in all things in life or business. But for me, when it comes to the idea of kind of bootstrapping my business, I would say my biggest failure has been, or my biggest learning opportunity has been that I did not invest in the education side of my business as quickly as I should have. And I think this is 
I don't know if it's specific to certain like creative fields, but with photography, a lot of the emphasis is put on, you know, you need the best camera and the best lenses and the lighting and all these tools, which are great. But if you don't have the knowledge and the know-how behind that to use those tools to make your business more successful, then you're, you're just having fancy equipment. You're just throwing money away. And so I spent too much time in the beginning of my business kind of throwing money at things that didn't really help my business move forward. And so that kind of leads into my biggest success was when I did start investing in learning and educating myself and putting money towards what I knew was going to help me advance my business, I saw things take off in ways that I never dreamed of. And so While that was my biggest success as far as those investments helped get me to where I was able to leave my nine to five and run my business full time and build this amazing career around what I love doing, I also kind of piggyback off of that failure of I wish I had done it sooner so that I hadn't waited so long in my business to start seeing that growth. When you don't have someone else's money invested in your business and every penny you make is important, it's really key to know where your money is going every single month. That was something that has been really beneficial to me. And I'm not someone who typically loves or enjoys diving into the numbers of my business, but knowing that I needed every penny to count towards something, I started teaching myself how to do this and I created a habit around it. And that was huge. It also, I think, is really key to make sure you avoid what I call shiny thing syndrome because When you have limited funds or the money that you're making is hard-earned money that you know has to be bookmarked for certain things, it's really important to kind of put your blinders on and focus on the goals in front of you. And especially with social media, it's so easy to hop onto Facebook or Instagram and you see products being offered and these other people in your industry saying, well, I did this and it was amazing or I tried it this way or I tried it that way and I'm all for experimenting. However, when you have to make every penny count, you have to really stay focused on the goal in front of you, block everything else out or earmark it for another time and really say, what is going to help me move down the path that I'm currently on? Because if you start veering off in too many directions, you're never going to achieve the goal you're ultimately out to, to achieve. And so I think that knowing your numbers and really staying focused on your goals, if you find something is kind of veering you off track, come back to that question of, is investing time and money into this thing going to help me achieve my goal faster or help me achieve my goal in a better way? And if the answer is no, it's time to walk away and keep focusing on the path that you're on. When you're trying to build a business on a budget, it's really easy, and I mentioned this earlier about the shiny thing syndrome, but it's really easy to get distracted by thinking you need all of these extra things. You need all of these apps and these programs and these subscriptions and the things. When really what I like to do and what I like to help other people do in their business is just strip all that away and get back to like the basic foundations of what makes a successful business. And one thing that I always come back to that's been a really solid foundation in my business is email marketing. And I love email marketing for a lot of reasons, but one is it's a cost-effective way to reach a large audience and to build relationships with your audience without feeling like you are having to fight with an algorithm or you're not having to be the flashiest thing on the screen at the time. And when you think about all the most successful businesses in the world, they all have an email list. They're all ultimately driving you to an email list. It's a very strong, solid marketing strategy. And so I hear a lot of times people like, yeah, I hear you. I I, I should start an email list. I have no idea how to start an email list. What do I do? So I created a free email marketing starter kit. And so what that email kit does is it walks you through the three sort of starting steps of how to get your email list launched and start growing and start building connections. So in the first part of the kit, I walk you through all of kind of the tech of how to set up your email list, like what you actually need as far as an email provider, a platform, all the things. The second part of the kit is walking you through how to start getting people onto your email list using a lead magnet or a freebie of some kind. And then the third part is what do you do once they're on your list? 
how to start creating those connections through email sequences. So grab that free guide and you can start building an email marketing foundation in your business as well. I hope you enjoyed that episode and were able to take away a valuable nugget of information that you can implement right away in your own business. If you feel your story would be valuable for the listeners of this show, please visit frugal.show forward slash guest.